Manalangin tayo. Sa ngala ng Ama, at ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Jesus, ang mapagkalingang anak. Sa gitna ng di maarok na hirap na dinaranas mo habang nakabayubay sa krus na banal, ay nagawa mo pa ipadama ang iyong paglingap sa inang Maria sa paghahabilin sa iyong minamahal na disipulo. Kaminawa sa aming pagiging anak ay makuha naming kalingain at itaguyod ang aming mga magulang, hindi lamang sa kanilang kalakasan. Manapay higit naming naisin na sila'y pagsilbihan sa kanilang kahinaan at katandaan. Nawa ang karunungan at karanasang naibahagi sa amin, aming mapagyaman at maging gabay sa aming pakikibaka sa hamon ng buhay at maging inspirasyon na magpapatatag tungo sa pagkakamit na mga hangarin sa buhay. Kami bilang mga magulang ay masuyong yakapi ng mga anak na sa aming umaasa at gagabay sa pagtahak sa landasin walang katiyakan. Kami naway maging mapanagutang mga bastol sa pamamagitan ng tamang pagdidisiplina sa kanilang maling gawi. Pakikinig sa kanilang mga hinaing, pagdamay sa kanilang pag-iisa, at paghahandog ng may kalidad na oras para sa kanila. Diyos aming Ama, aming kanlungan, dumarating sa punto ng aming buhay ang kabiguan. Nakararanas ng kawalang pag-asa, nararamdamang humihinto sa pag-ikot ng mundo at hindi makaalis o makagalaw man lamang sa aming kinatatayuan. Nagigipit sa mga pangangailangang temporal. At sa ganitong pagkakataoy, napapausal ng Diyos ko, Diyos ko, bakit naman ako po ay iyong pinabayaan? Ama, patawad. Makita at maranasan nawa namin ang iyong pananatili sa aming puso. Ama, patawad. Tulungan po kaming piliing magkaroon ng kagalakan sa aming mga puso at masiyahang kung anuman ang mayroon kami. Ama, patawad. Umasa nawa kami sa iyong mabuting kalooban kalakip ang aming munting pagsusumikap. Ama, patawad. Kanlungan mo nawa kami ng iyong makaamang proteksyon at pagmamahal. Ama, patawad. Ang amin nawang kahinaan sa pagsuong sa mga hamon ng buhay ay mahustuhan mo ng iyong lakas upang di kami makaranas ng kakulangan. O Ama ng awa at habag, maawa ka sa amin. O Jesus ang mabuting pastol, maawa ka sa amin. O Banal na Spirito, aming gabay, maawa ka sa amin. Amen. Sa ngala ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo, Amen.
John chapter 19 to verses 26 to 27. So when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her into his own household. Our tonight sharer for this very personalized word of Jesus is an educator, a doctor of philosophy and educational leadership, MSc, with a pastoral orientation and trained catechist. She is with Sisters of St. Paul of Shorts for 46 years and currently the directress of St. Mary's Catholic High School, Mohaisna. Sisters and brothers, let's all welcome Sister Teresita Bayona, SPC. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Tonight, I invite you to a reflection of the third word of Jesus from the cross. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. The third time Jesus spoke from the cross, he spoke directly to his mother, who stood by the side of his beloved child. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. In this passage, Jesus calls his mother woman. We recall one other time when Jesus called his mother woman. That was at the wedding that came towards the end of Jesus' hidden life. This is not a good way of addressing a mother but it shows very early on who Mary is. She stands for the new woman of creation, a new Eve. Remember in the story of creation, a woman named Eve led humanity into sin by her disobedience to the word of God. But here at the crucifixion, the new woman the new year, Mary, is faithful to the end. We are told that only Mary and John remain to watch the Lord suffer. All the rest of the apostles and disciples went into hiding for fear of the Jews. Falcon Sheen highlights that in the first three words of the cross, we hear Jesus speaking to three different groups of people. We met the first two groups this night when we reflected on the first two words of Jesus. First, his enemies who were crucifying him, like the Roman soldiers and the high priests. Second, the sinners who were not faithful to their life, such as the two thieves crucified to them, Barabbas, Judas, who betrayed them, and others. And tonight, finally, the saints who have true faith in Jesus were certified by Mary and John. But also, to each group, he gives something. To his enemies, like his executioners, he offers forgiveness. To the sinners, like the repentant faith, he offers entrance into heaven. And now, what does he offer the saints who believe in him and Mary and John? He gives them to one another. We are a gift. Thus, the blended theme chosen by the fellow gift while you have 
is very because Jesus gives us village He offers to each one of us the gift of the other. Can there be a greater gift than the gift of self to another? That means I am here for you and you are here for me. This is a tremendous encouragement of faith to those who believe in him that like you and I. Here, Jesus is showing us that our needs are met when we do everything to follow him. Mary of Jesus Christ stands in as the mother of us all, just as the woman he was the mother of us all. We know that Eve's motherhood was sustained by original sin, which we inherit from her and Adam. But Mary's motherhood brings us closer to Jesus, who removes that original sin. On the cross, Jesus entrusted the disciple to Mary and Mary to the disciple, making Mary the mother of us all. And John stands in as a representative for us, the church. It is at the crucifixion that Mary gives birth to the church and becomes the mother of everyone. But she, at this time, is in extreme anguish as she watches her son suffer the humiliation of death. Death on the cross. Unlike her mother, who knew Jesus in Bethlehem, when she experienced a birth without death, Mary's motherhood of the church and all of us is born by sorrow for our sins. Jesus from the cross gave to us the church a loving, caring, sustaining, Encouraging family beyond any human family. The church is a spiritual family. How then should we relate to each other as church? Jesus describes being church by the way he illustrated the relationship between Mary and John as mother and son or father. Thus, if Jesus purchased the church with his own blood and ordained that in it, raven mothers, sons and sons, fine, caring mothers, then today, no one should be without a caring family in the body of Christ, the church. In the creation story, at the foot of the tree of good and evil, it was by weakness and disobedience that he lost the title Mother of the Living. In contrast, in the crucifixion account, it was at the foot of the cross that Mary, by sacrifice and obedience, regains the title, Mother of the Living. What a destiny, a most privileged gift to have the Mother of God as our Mother and Jesus as our Mother. We meditate too in a special way on Mary's growing in our spiritual life and how we can imitate her devotion to her son, especially her fidelity till the end. Watching Mary at the foot of the cross brings to mind significant events in the life of the woman Mary, the mother of Jesus, that explains her presence at the crucifixion. First, 
of the Annunciation. The angel Gabriel told Mary that she was blessed among women, not among women. This implies that the blood of Jesus saved just that any other person is saved. We are also saved by the blood of Jesus, just as many of us. Mary needed her son as a savior. Mary went to Calvary as a sad mother, but Jesus did not go there as a frustrated son. He went there in order to be a savior to mankind, including his mother. Despite the unique privileges Mary enjoyed as mother of God's son, such as the Immaculate Conception and Assumption to Heaven, she was in a sinful world needing redemption. She was not saved by what she did for Jesus, rather, by what Jesus did for her. This is also true with us. She was not saved by what she did for Jesus, but by what Jesus did for her. This is also true with us. She had to trust in Him as her personal Savior in the same way as the repentant thief and the Roman soldiers. Here we learn that at the cross we are all equal. We are equal in our status as sinners. We are equal in our need for salvation. And we equal in that we can only be saved by faith in Christ. Second, at the presentation of the baby Jesus at the temple, Simeon told Mary that her son would bless men and that she would suffer because of him. Simeon was then speaking about Mary as mother. He described how a sharp sword would pierce her soul. By this, Simeon prophesied presence of Mary at the crucifixion, witnessing the humiliation and death of Jesus on the cross. At one instance, while Jesus was preaching, a woman in the crowd cried out, Blessed is the mother who gave him birth and nursed him. Jesus replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and believe. Clearly, it is not the giving birth that makes a person blessed in the eyes of God. Rather, it is hearing and keeping the word of God that makes people blessed in the eyes of God. This is true for you and I, isn't it? In another account, we hear Jesus say, For whoever shall do the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, my sister, my mother. Isn't this a blessing for those who strive to do the will of God, like you and I? If Jesus was eager to care for his mother, how much more eager will he be today to care for those who hear and act out the word of God? If Jesus could provide for the needs of his own mother and beloved disciple, in the moment of his great witness and humiliation while hanging on the cross, how much more? Can He provide for our needs, yours and mine, in His present condition of wealth, of honor, and exaltation? What 
question we might ask tonight. Is it possible to love Jesus more than Mary did? We can try. She has shown us how. What are the lessons we learn? In order to take Mary to our homes like John, the beloved disciple, we need to know her. To know Mary is to follow her. And standing by Mary at the foot of the cross, like John did, we become sons and daughters of Mary. A son and a daughter of Mary is to witness to Jesus' death and resurrection. This too is a challenge for young people. If they understand their mischief in the church. But mind me, young people who are strong, firm, and courageous are willing to follow Jesus to the cross, willing to accompany Mary at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross, Jesus asks his mother and his disciple to contemplate each other, to penetrate each other's heart, and to live in an intimate relationship with one another. As a result, the disciple eagerly takes Jesus' mother to his home. The same invite is offered to us tonight. Are we willing and ready to take Mary and become her without son? Am I willing to care for a person in dire need? No unknown to me, the vulnerable, the abandoned, the marginalized, the dying to be lingering sickness, the neglected among us, can I offer myself as a gift to the other in order that the other may live? events challenge the global community, the body of Christ, and echo the learnings from the third word of Jesus from the cross. These events show how we as church see the express meaning and purpose and experience our connectedness to the present moment, to self to others and the global community, to nature and to life. Often, the worst of times brings the best in us. Consider, Jesus' death on the cross gave birth to the church, making Mary the mother of Jesus, the mother of all. First, is the coronavirus disease, COVID-19. It is disrupting varying spheres of our social, political, or economical times, and also intruding into our spiritual domain. Despite the lingering uncertainty, COVID-19 scientifically offers us an opportunity to reflect on the spiritual impact it has on the world and humanity. COVID-19 creates a worldwide threat, but also reminds us we are a global community. It leaves no space for stigmatization of a particular country or ethnic It has removed barriers for we and they, here and there, and stirs up the value of belongingness amongst us. It has demonstrated that it sees our globe as one single interdependent community, as a strong 
as the weakest link. We realize how the linking is the problem of our global community, the Christ's body, the church. COVID-19 demands physical distancing, but requires unified societal action. Restrictions have been made on travel, tours, social gatherings, public functions, and people are urged to follow basic hygiene, not to leave others, or if necessary, to maintain distance. But the same the current situation of physical or social distancing also unites people in an emotional and spiritual sense by providing opportunities to care for each other. The essence of the lockdowns is to protect other citizens, especially the elderly, who run the highest risk, together with people with underlying health conditions. COVID-19 has aroused the gift of unity and interconnectedness in the health systems of several countries and has been animating and coordinating the decisions and actions at global, national, state or provincial, and more of levels. It demands global cooperation and solidarity. The young and old need to care for each other. People with good health should care about the people with health conditions. And obviously, countries should also care for each other in this global pandemic. In other words, we need intergenerational solidarity, cross-national solidarity. COVID-19 attacks human beings, but also stirs up humanity as well. The pandemic changes our look out towards others and our global it forces us to be compassionate and protect people we know, but also people we don't know or even possibly care about, including elders, economically, and those marginalized in their own countries. COVID-19 ceases religious freedom, but kingdoms faith. Human beings to turn to prayer in a time of crisis. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, religious places including mosques, churches, or temples are being closed. The weekly liturgy ban, masses suspended, and rituals were paid. People return hopeless and say, Oh God, where? Getting through these testing times will require a lot of spiritual innovation. Amid this situation, people are encouraged to stay home, pray from home, and use the liturgy and prayer resources program. Often, priests pray a major role in conducting church services. However, a call to pray from home transfers greater responsibility to the lady. Praying from home brings in a realization that all can have access to God through Jesus and all have a priestly responsibility of interceding for the people. It is time for understanding that similar to gathering of the faithful in physical church buildings, family members praying together in their homes is also the real church, the body of Christ. The call to pray from home equally assures God's presence. Such a divine responsibility, however, 
means to be handled with faith. It pushes us hard to rekindle our faith, to see God's intervention in overpowering the disastrous effects of coronavirus. COVID-19 pandemic reminds us we deep down, deep within, spiritual beings, and makes us recognize that the problem of coronavirus is right here at the face of humanity. It is a challenge that requires a global cooperation and unity, a component of compassion to alleviate suffering and a greater responsibility to exercise our faith, to witness divine intervention in the spirit of an intimate relationship of Mary, our The second challenge is the global experience we are facing, the Ukrainian crisis. We see that in the face of the in the face of brutal military force, every church season and division falls. And we humans all unite in the name of God through the intercession of Mary, the mother of God. The invasion of Ukraine is causing massive humanitarian crisis in addition to the pain and suffering experienced by those inside Ukraine. There are millions of people seeking refuge in neighboring nations with similar numbers displaced within Ukraine. This is a gargantuan task for the world community to aid, shelter, and house these unfortunate people. Once again, the vulnerable will suffer the most. Vulnerable populations are most likely to become refugees and find it hardest to bear the rising costs of food and fuel. Aid efforts are underway globally to ensure that people's basic needs for food, shelter, and psychological safety are met in and beyond the conflict zone. Pope Francis says in the prayer of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, there is no magic formula, but a spiritual man. It is an act of complete trust on the part of us children of God, who, amid the tribulation of this trouble and senseless war that threatens our world, we turn to men, reposing all our fears and faith in her heart and abandoning ourselves to her. Pope Francis went on to reflect on Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel at the Annunciation, in which God invites her to become the mother of the Son of God. The angel Gabriel gave Mary the only true reason for joy with his words, The Lord is with you. The Lord echoes our call as he gave Mary in Nazareth brings us unexpected amazement and joy in the midst of suffering and difficulties. The angel Gabriel also tells Mary, do not be afraid. In this way, God sends us a clear and comforting message. Once our lives are open to Him, fear can no longer hold us in bondage. Mary, in the here and now, invites and accompanies us to 
when we turn to the source of our death, to the Lord, who is the ultimate remedy against fear and emptiness in life. Mary's response to God's invitation was a lively desire to obey God, and we are invited to do the same. The prayer of consecration affirms that Mary always leads to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Pope Francis also mentions Mary's role as an intercessor. At the wedding feast at Cana, Mary interceded with Jesus, and Jesus worked his first public miracle. The letter of consecration also directly quotes Jesus' words on the cross when he entrusted his mother to his disciple John, saying, Behold, your mother. The prayer of consecration specifically asks the Blessed Mother to free us from war and to protect our world from the menace of nuclear weapons. The prayer of consecration for their sins at this time. Mary helps us and grants us her power. And she says to us once more, Am I not here? I who am your mother. Tonight, Together, as God's family, we pray. Mother Mary, take our own journey into your hands. May you guide our steps through the steep and arduous paths of fraternity and value. Along the way of peace.